This is the state of the nation. Ibifa Mwanga. We are deliberate. We are reasonable. We are uncensored. The state of the nation with Henry Salva. We are deliberate, we are reasonable, we are uncensored. Welcome to the African Alumni Association. My name is Henry Sully and this is the State of the Nation. Before we start, we wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto African Alumni Association operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land for the Huron, Wendant, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is home to many indigenous people from across the Tato Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Uh, many people always wonder why I start uh, with the land acknowledgement. Well, it's because I am an immigrant on the land on which I operate here in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and therefore I pay due respect to the people uh, who have uh, accepted me as a visitor, but also as a citizen uh, on their land. So I appreciate them. Uh, again, welcome to the African Alumni Association. My name is Henry Sully, and this is uh, the State of the Nation. Today, we are interrogating uh, the Muhozi man, not the project, but the man. There are two concepts. There is the concept of the Muhozi project. Then there's one of the Muhoz, the man. So we are trying to interrogate who is Muhoz, the man. You know very well, he just celebrated his 48th uh, birthday uh, and he made sure that it becomes a national uh, issue. Even though many people on the ground are struggling with paying uh, for groceries or essentials, basic needs, uh, this a uh, young man of 48 decided uh, to celebrate his birthday and make it a national uh, issue. Many have, many elites in Uganda uh, have uh, named him the imposter diplomat for one reason. He pulled off a diplomatic engagement uh, that was successful that led to the reopening of the uh, Katuna border uh, between Rwanda and Uganda. That is the reason why some people are calling him an imposter, uh, an imposter diplomat. Is he a diplomat? We are going to find out. Uh, who is he? Where was he born? Is he eligible uh, to run for president? And can he sustain the project? Uh, the so-called Mohozi uh, project. Do you think their strategies will work? Uh, this morning, I think this morning or today, he called uh, his dad as well as the president of Rwanda, uh, two of the most strategic uh, leaders in Eastern Central Africa. Uh, is it true? We are about to find out. In the studio with me today, Two very important uh, colleagues, Marion Chilavo, most of you know who she is. She'll be introducing herself shortly. And Maurice Ojili, uh, Honorable Luta Maguzi is supposed to be with us, but she uh, is still struggling with the internet, still struggling to log on. If he does end up logging on, uh, we shall be delighted to have him because I think he has been one of the, 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 the fiercest critic uh, of the uh, the Museveni government, as well as uh, the so-called Mohozi project. Uh, he has embarked on awakening Ugandans, those who are still asleep. Uh, I think it's the same task that we are taking on here at the State of the Nation to awaken Ugandans uh, regarding the political issues of their country, understanding very well that we cannot resolve the economic, the social, and the cultural issues if we fail to solve the political question, the leadership question, the transition question. Therefore, before we start, 
I want to invite my colleagues to introduce themselves, starting with the lady in the house, Marion. Welcome to the State of the Nation. Uh, thank you so much, Henry. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Um, can you hear me before I proceed? My network is on and off. I know. You do, you do hear you, yes. So, yes, once again, my name is Marion Chirabo. Um, I'm the CEO of Next Gen Women Initiative, which is an organization that is focused on increasing women's participation in political spaces especially at institutional level and i'm glad to be here i hope we can dive into the matters of the day and perhaps give ugandans a perspective of what is going on and how we could be part of the change that we want to see yeah thank you so much marion nice to see you once again uh, mr ojiri morris gave Unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Uh, we haven't seen in a while. It's been a while that uh, you have uh, been here. Uh, unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself once again. Uh, thanks a lot, Ndugu uh, Sari, for hosting me on this show. I'm called Maurice Ogiri, a native of Apache district, or the quite United States of Apache. I've been there for some time. You know that very well. We work together. We work together in, uh, in some... We've been at the I've been at the political scene for some time. You know that very well. Me and you, yeah. we've been working together for some time. So when things didn't work out somewhere, which you know very well, I went to sleep for some time. Uh, with the resurgence of uh, the imposter, I'm like, no, it can't just go like that. Let me come back. To the, let me come back to the, to the scene again and see how to unveil him properly. Otherwise, thanks a lot for hosting me again on this show today. Thank you so much again for joining the State of the Nation. And uh, uh, we are excited to know more about this guy, uh, the imposed uh, diplomat, uh, also known as uh, Mohozi Kaine Rugawa. Uh, we know that uh, it's very important that we start from the beginning, right? But before we go to the beginning, we know very well that... Uh, most recently, one of his biggest achievement, internationally at least, internationally, he was able to broker off a deal, a diplomatic deal between Rwanda and Uganda. And of course, we very well know, based on the information that is online, uh, he calls uh, the president of Rwanda his uncle, and of course the president of Uganda is his dad. Uh, this morning, he posted that I consider President uh, Kagutam Seven and President Paul Kagame the best strategists that ever lived. When Team MK wins power in this country, which we will, our first act will be to increase the sports budget. So he's already putting himself uh, into the fray uh, to become the next president of Uganda, even though the documentation, most of the documentation indicates uh, that he is not eligible to run for president of Uganda based on where he was born uh, originally. Uh, and of, of course, uh, if we are to go with the constitution of Uganda, he cannot run for president if he, he was not born in Uganda. Why don't we start uh, with where he was born? Do we know where Mr. Mohoz wa, 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 was born? Do we know who his real mother is? Because uh, recently I was reading uh, uh, a book from uh, the, the Minister of Education, uh, who is also uh, apparently uh, General Mohoz's stepmom, Janet Kataham Seven. Uh, and she seems to be telling the, the nation, the, uh, to, she seems to be telling Ugandans uh, that she's the mother of uh, uh, Mohoz uh, Kainelugawa. Uh, Kainel uh, why don't we start with where he was born? Who is Mohoz Kainelugawa? When was he born? Where was he born? Uh, may I start with, uh, with you, Morris? Do you have any idea where Mr. Mohoz uh, was born 
and who his mother is because apparently according to to, to wikipedia uh even wikipedia is not sure he says uh he calls uh is i think wikipedia says that the so-called mom is janet kataham seven but it's not certain it's not certain he says allegedly uh, they call they, they call janet kataham seven an alleged mom uh, which means it is something to look into uh, and find out. What are your thoughts, Mr. Jerry? Uh, I won't delve much into where he was born, but given the books I've been reading about him, right? Yeah. Because I may not be the biographer to know a lot, like deep details about him. I try to do research about him, but all I know, if you read the the mother's book, mother offered some book. I think I read that book like ten years ago now, eight or five years ago. I don't remember or so. Even the master seed. Of course, the father documents that he was born around 1974 in Tanzania. Of course, given our constitution now, I don't think he's supposed to even be the president of Uganda. He shouldn't even be talking about it. Then, some other rumor. Now, this is a rumor, right? I don't have any proper uh, knowledge about it. Says he was born in Tanzania, I think, to a lady called Hope Rakweru. I don't know. That's the mother. Right, hearing that for some time though, but I don't have details about that. Like I told you, this one shall leave it to his biographer. I may not know much about that, I won't delve much there. My center of focus, I want my center of focus to be around because this issue called Mohozi, the Mohozi, Mohozi topic has, uh, has been now uh, I mean, in, in the political domain in Uganda for some time now, it's been on for some time. I got to know about him, I think his name came in the limelight around 1999, right. When I think he recruited these OBs from Kisubi and Budo, that was in Kasenya. They went for training in Kasenya and they said they called them LDUs. Then they were called LDUs. So I didn't pay much attention because I knew. And LDUs, of course, you know, the, 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 the work of the LDUs then, their work was to deal with petty thieves around the village and so on and so forth. So most Uganda didn't pay this much attention, right? But his name again resurfaced around 2001. Okay, between 99 and 2000, that's when I think he went to Sandhurst for a military course, right? Then he came back and married his wife in a very pompous wedding. Now, his name coming to the limelight, real limelight from then to date, it has never gone back, it was in 2001. That was in his father's uh, uh, swearing in ceremony, ceremony in Kololo, when Gaddafi yeah. promoted a second lieutenant, right? He left Sandhurst as a lieutenant, a second lieutenant. Gaddafi promoted him to a major. When Gaddafi promoted to a major, it, people made a lot of noise. How come? How? How could he just end up becoming a major? So his name has been there for some time. So since between, from 2001 to 2000, maybe 13, he kept on rising steadily in rank in the army. Kept on rising steadily in, in, in ranks. I think he was promoted every week, if I'm not mistaken. Every week he was being promoted. And he had the privilege of being taken to all the best military schools I think we have around the world. Where haven't you been, by the way? He's been to Fort Something, in, in Fort Something Military School in the U.S. He was in Sanders, of course, you know Sanders. It's one of the most pre prestigious military school in the world. He was in South Africa. Many, I can't even name all of them. Many, Egypt, something like that. Yeah. So then we didn't also pay much attention. We just knew maybe he wants to be a soldier like the father. Uh, his real name, stopping at that, his real name resurfaces now on the issue of political leadership around 2013 when General Sejusa right. wrote a letter to ISO mm -hmm. to investigate the allegations of what everybody Uganda knows because it's something in the open. That's a little I know about him. That is the little you know about him. The, 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 the mother you have mentioned, I think, has also mm -hmm. uh, uh, appeared. Uh, in a document that is uh, uh, going around the, the internet right now, Hopra Raheru, Hope Raheru, uh, originally born in uh, Buraya, Fort Potro, Uganda. She was 23 when she gave birth to um, Hozuka in Erugaba. At the time, according to this document, uh, Mr. Yoweri Tibuhavura, uh, Lutawa, si, Lutawa Sirwa, Lutawa Sirwa, Museven, 
our 30 years uh, and uh, apparently was born in Intari, Rwanda. Um, uh, 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 we need to, to figure out the, uh, the authentication of this documentation, of course, uh, to figure out what exactly is going on. But I wonder what Marion has. What are your thoughts, Marion? Hello? Because we be, I, I, I think it's very important that before we interrogate the Mohoz project, we understand the man behind uh, the entire project. So who is the man? And I yes, we do only, hear you. I think the only thing you just, <laughs> that is material right now, is whether or not he's Museveni's son. <laughs> I think that is the major and only qualification right now at this moment. I don't think maybe until this regime goes, any of us will ever have the exact facts. Uh, right now, he is protected by, of course, his father's machinery and the government, which is the government machinery. They can construct any story about him to fit their narrative, just like they have been doing with Museveni's age for all this time and his level of education, whether or not he has a degree. So it's the same thing. We will not be able to trust who his real mom is, where he was exactly born. I mean, right now they're saying he was born in Tanzania. Tomorrow they can wake up and say, actually, this man was born in Fort Put. Like, they can make up anything as long as it fits their narrative. Because, um, the tools of propaganda, they, they create, they, they relatively uh, influence our reality. And they, they have such power that they can also create their own reality right now as it stands. So whether or not um, he was born here, his mom is here, it doesn't matter. What matters is that, is he the son? Is he the person who they can entrust with their legacy? Is he the person who they can entrust on the throne and say that, okay, if he is there, we are protected. Um, uh, the, our political enemies will not come after us and, you know, confiscate all the wealth and and all the 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 lands and everything that we have achieved in the last 40 years that we are relatively safe that we can continue to influence the politics of Uganda and of the interacastrian region you know because that is also important because that source of wealth as we have seen most of it has been gotten through these wars that they get you know Kagame and Museveni have been as thick as thieves when it comes to exploiting their neighbors and creating wars in countries like Congo and, and you know, South Sudan and, and the rest, looking for ways to sustain their wealth and, you know, exploit. So it shouldn't um, surprise anyone if Kagame would be interested in continuing that same legacy with someone who is seen as Museveni's successor, someone who is even relatively young, giving him the upper upper hand. You get, he can easily, um, he can easily influence a one, a one Muhozi who perhaps is not even a politician, manipulate him however he wants. You know, that maybe I would say that a one root or if they were to come into power or anything so he's the best ally you know to continue whatever illicit transactions they have been having to continue the Museveni legacy, yes or no. And that then we can create for him a mom, we can create for him a citizenship, we can create for him everything. Uh, this yeah. is, it's very interesting. It is very interesting that you have talked about, you're talking about allies right now. And uh, you're saying uh, you're saying that uh, uh, it could be the best ally right now for them to protect their wealth, their uh, and everything they have done so far, protect them from the law, protect the, the, the wealth they have accumulated, uh, regardless of uh, how much uh, of uh, uh, mismanagement that has gone through the country. And they have used to accumulate that wealth. And it's very 
interesting that we are talking about this now. How did we get here? When? How did we let this guy accumulate all this clout? Did did we ignore him so much that uh, he has gotten here without our knowledge? Like, what happened when uh, Geno Sejusa revealed the project, the Mohosi project? Why did we interrogate this guy then and uh, put him in his place before he could get to where he is right now? And what must we do to ensure that uh, this plan that does not continue, uh, the plan that has gone on in Uganda, that it does not continue with, an, uh, with another generation uh, of uh, uh, another generation of people born outside of Uganda? Maurice, you are muted. See, you're saying, uh, what did we do? Why, why, why did it take us so long, so long to understand, understand this, to know all this? Did we ignore this guy? Did we think, did, did we think that he could get to, 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 to the proportions that he is at right now? Because it seems that we ignored him so so much that uh, we are now waking up when it's early. We, we, are, we, are, we are trying to cover ourselves in the morning at 6 a.m. See, before I even answer that, it's a very good question, though. But before I answer it, that's the reason why we wanted Lutama Guzi here, right? That's the reason why I really wanted him. But still, I could pinpoint out something he mentioned recently, that he's writing a book, he's authoring a book that says... Uganda is among the most sleeping nations in the world. There's a population that is sleeping. I think he's right in a way. Ugandans have been sleeping for a long, long time, right from the 70s, right? Uganda is like a testing ground for anything. Anyone can do anything in Uganda in the world. This right. thing happened with the 70s time, but it started from the 70s. There have been a lot of extrajudicial killings right from the 70s. And you find the government or state of the day, or the population of the day could do nothing about it. So Luton Mugudi talked of the Galatians coming to a country, the, the Galatians coming to a country as, as refugees, as something like that. Then within right. a short time, they had planted the entire country naked. So we see that also happening in Uganda today. But it's unfortunate that he, has not, he hasn't joined the, the, the show today. I don't even know why. But Uganda is a sleeping nation, I can tell you this. Even if you alert them about something, they won't pay much attention towards it. Yet they know it's wrong. For example, whatever has been happening in Uganda for the past 30 or 40 years or so. There have been a lot of evil done in Uganda. And Ugandans know it. They know it's wrong. For example, you can't rule out the fact that there have been election rigging. We all know this. He has been rigging his way out right from around 2001 or something like that. But Uganda do nothing about it. You do something wrong, people, you will disappear with people, arrest people, torture them, and the Ugandans see you have tortured somebody, you have arrested them. They will talk nothing about it. They will talk about it for a day or two or three. They can't sustain something. Two or three or four days after that, it goes back to normal. So going back to what's happening with Mohosi now, it's not a big thing as such, given the prevailing situation in Uganda, how Ugandans behave. Ugandans will see something like I've told you, and they won't act. Not until it goes deep or it hurts them so deep, that's when maybe they'll wake up. Let me give a simple example here before we delve much into this in the in 1970s. You know what happened in the 70s from 1971 to 78, right? Right. There was a lot of extrajudicial killing from, from by, 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 by a mean soldier, so called state such bureau then. And Ugandans knew this. It went on for around nine years, right? It only took the intervention of another foreign country, a sovereign state, to bring back Ugandans. What were Ugandans doing? Of course, there were some exiles that also came in, but it took the power of another president of a sovereign state to restore order in Kampala. And Ugandans knew this. Are you still surprised that a man like Amin came with his P4 papers and ruled Uganda for eight years? Are you surprised today? It's very unfortunate that it's also happening in our time. That right. our generation, right? Yeah. That our generation has also allowed this to happen. Me, I thought this was something that happened during our parents' generation. We wouldn't have allowed right. something like this. But it's very unfortunate that the generation of Sally, the Ogilis of today, are also allowing such a thing to happen. Right? So Mohosi coming in and the father pulled, the, the father kept on pulling, putting the limelight for, for, for some time. He kept on coming in for some time. Let me give an example. The other man called uh, Joseph Goebbels, 
So of course, that quote was used a lot by Hitler, but it was a quote by Goebbels. He said, if something is put, if a lie is told repeatedly, to some extent yeah. it becomes the truth, right? Right. The first time the issue of Mohozi project came into the limelight, you kind of yeah. made a lot of noise, right? Because it was the first time they were hearing of it. Mm-hmm. But after some time, because it's very much in the public, very much in the public domain and it's being discussed a lot, what happened? It becomes normal. When it becomes normal, and they don't even pay much attention towards it. But before mm-hmm. they know it, this man will be in state house. Before they know it, because as events are taking place now, as events, as you see things unfolding, if we do not do something about it, our generation, our dad's generation, and our kids' generation will be ruined. You're talking of a man who is being fronted. He is now support, I think he has so far covered 70% of his dreams, if I'm not to be mistaken. 70%. Yeah. The father has so far now pushed 70%. Why do I say this? When the father came to power, of course, there, were, there, were, there was a hierarchy. Oppo should have taken off from the father, right? Yeah. There was the Kategayas, there was Mbabazis, there was who we knew all this. Come to 11, 2001. Did 2001, right? When Dr. Vesiji apparently jumped yeah. to that show as well. I was telling you, I was going to come on that. I was going to mention yeah. that. When they said, if Kagu goes, if, if the father of the imposter goes, who comes in? Kategaya. When Kategaya goes, who comes in? Mbabazi. Then basically, yeah. then Mbabazi accused Besage of jumping the queue. So before you go even deep into that, what happened with the queue? Do you see I any know. of their names in the queue again anymore? Now the queue has been zero to a first family, and Ugandans are quiet about it. Right. The queue has been zero to the first family. Okay, what happened to Katagaya? Died a very frustrated man. What happened to Mbabazi's queue? Fast rising. It was more or less a state within the state himself. What happened? Right? Yeah. What happened to Mbabazi? That today, we, it has now zeroed to the first family. How? Name the first kept, kept on coming up. The first name that came in was for the first lady. I hear the wife cannot take over. You can imagine. They have now reduced yeah. us to a level of, of, of kingdomship, a dynasty. The wife's name came up for some time. It disappeared. Then the brother's name came in. Salah's name came in. It also disappeared. Which other name came up again? Uh, Rabogo. Yeah. name came up. Now, as I'm talking right now, all those names have gone out to, the, to oblivion. Now, Rabogo's R- name is still around. It's just not being fronted yet. Not much as we see this one now. Now, for this one, they are using all the state resources. They are using everything within their means to make sure he becomes president, which is very obvious. You don't need to be blind to see, right? You don't need to be blind to see that. The young man, the so-called imposter, is being positioned, is being positioned to become the president of Uganda. It's something in the public. It's something in the public now. It's open, so it's between. It's it's a matter. We need to if we don't wake up and put a cap on what's happening now and stop it. We are doomed. We are we, doomed. We are doomed. That's a very 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 uh, tough statement to say, uh, Marion. What do you think? Like when you hear when you hear uh, Mr. Jiri say everything that he's saying right now uh, and then you you compound it with uh with Mohozi's recent tweet that i just read uh that i think you have also seen somewhere uh praising his dad and his uncle and assuring us that uh, he is going to win and then when when he wins uh the youth like uh, he's thinking about uh investing in sports uh that's for him that's the, the the big issue right now for the youth what are your thoughts when you see this uh, as a young leader who is also mentoring uh encouraging more ladies to to engage into politics <laughs> well, well when i look at most of this post i think is very delusional as a person and quite out of touch with this country and i will just start from there it has always been a common trend, whether it was Gaddafi, um, whether it was anyone else that took Korea. Like, look at dictatorships all over. Since history, they have always wanted for their sons and daughters to succeed them. You get, he makes sure he gives the, the, the son or daughter all the resources and you know all the training everything 
that they need. But as history has shown us, it is not easy for you to successfully hand over power uh, the presidency, especially in what we would call maybe a pseudo democracy over mm -hmm. to your son or your daughter. I mean, even in monarchies, even if we look at the history of monarchies, it was hard even in those days, you know, live alone these days of constitutional monarchies whereby no succession, just because that the seat doesn't hold the power it used to anymore. So no one is struggling for it anymore. But even in the past, with that power, with that, with that, the, the power that came with the seat, people were always eager, fighting for it, watching. As soon as the ruler died, they were quick to jump and execute their kids <laughs> immediately because they posed a threat. So it's not as easy. You see, the respect that, let me say, um, Seveni's political allies would have for him and the kind of influence and the power he he holds over them and how he maneuvers and maybe manipulates and you know threatens and creates consensus about them museven is his own person and muhoz is a different other person whereas these all these players in the political scene can be loyal to him him being let me say the oldest even when he came to power if you look at the cadres he was much older than them he was 42 and the people who were, you know, next to him were like in their 20s and in their 30s. Yeah, you know? mainly so 23, the 24, most a of them. Level of, first of all, um, imbalance, power imbalance, but also the fact that, you know, he was the mastermind of this whole thing. So, can <laughs> you cannot transfer that level of respect. Right. Yes, you can. We didn't hear that last statement. We didn't hear that last, uh, the last statement that you made. Henry, yeah. can you hear me? Uh, barely. Is it my network that is breaking like I... I hear you in bits. Can you hear yeah. me? Well, we're, we're also hearing you in bits, so we are missing a huge chunk of the information you are sharing. Uh, she doesn't hear us. Okay. Yeah, so she she left. Uh, she'll be joining us. Uh, she'll, she'll be joining us uh, later. Your thoughts, your, your thoughts, Mr. Ojiri, uh, based mm. on uh, what uh, Marion has said. Mm. Of course, she said it's very hard for. What did she say? Very hard for. Um, Seven is uh, his own person, right? And uh, he said it's very hard for, for people to just bring in their sons uh, to, be, to, to replace them. Because even in the days uh, of the, 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 the colonies, it was hard. People fought uh, to take on uh, that, that kind of uh, leadership. Uh, but uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think uh, that uh, we have been played and uh, that uh, Ugandans are just going to come up and... Uh, accept the status quo because uh, i have heard in some circles already they have already started negotiating uh, with muhozi regarding having a, a unitary government as opposed to a, a just a nrm occupied government uh, in that they, they they want to ensure that even though uh they may not the opposition may not have the opportunity to govern uh, directly it, there should be some sort of compensation in terms of giving opposition members ministerial uh, positions to govern with the sitting government. Uh, so are we on the right track? Uh, or are Ugandans uh, already defeated? Uh, should we just sit back and wait uh, for the coronation of the uh, 
uh, the imposter diploma? Um, first of all, say it won't succeed. That's one. Two, as Marcus Garvey said, a people without a history is like a tree without roots, right? Unless the first family has forgotten our history. Our history is very clear. The only lucky part they have on their side that they've been at the helm for like 40 years. That's just luck, right? But them thinking they can transfer power from, their, from, 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 from them to their son, it won't succeed. It won't work. People have tried. In Africa, I think they only succeed in one place. For Uru, you can't talk about it because it was from Uru to his father. From Uru, from Uru to, from the father to him. No, it was different. So you can't say the one of Kenya succeeded. That was a different arrangement altogether. But it, in Africa, I think it only succeeded in Togo. Right? And you saw how what about, happened. How about Cameroon? In what Gabon as well. Cameroon not yet, in Gabon. It succeeded in Gabon, but you saw what happened as well. But... Yeah. If you're giving such reference as well, you can't compare Gabon to Uganda. You can't compare, how do you call this? Uh, uh, Gabon and where? What are you talking about? It, it happened in Gabon and... Um, it happened in Gabon in Africa. It happened in Gabon. It happened where again? Of course, I'll remember it. It happened in Gabon. Or under uh, Omar Bongo, of course. Yeah. If you look at their history, I think it was from another president, then Bongo took over, then to the sun. But if you look at our history, that's why you have to first know our history before you look, you cite uh, an example of Gabon. You have to know our history before you cite the example of maybe other countries. Now, it, it is, uh, it, uh, Hussein Barak tried in Egypt. Did he succeed? No. Yes. Somebody tried it in. Uh, and uh, the Saddam strike, did it succeed? In, in, did it succeed? It did no. not succeed. Where else again? I mean, there are endless examples. So, but our history is very clear. You know how the first government went. The second government came, you know how it went. The third one came, you know how it went. And you also know how the current president came to power. It was only him who should have broken that jinx of going to Kololo, maybe I don't know when, and handing over peacefully to another president. But the issue of him thinking he's going to hand over to his son and the son will continue, will continue with the father's ideology. It won't work. That won't work. I can tell you this, it won't succeed. Today yeah. is the first of May, Labor Day. If he ever succeeds, I'll never go back to my home in Apache. It won't succeed. Ugandans are going to fight it. Ugandans are going to fight it, but how? That's the question. How are the Ugandans going to fight that? Uh, that thing we all know. We also know that uh, in in uh, Botswana, I think the founding father, or the son of a founding father, ended up becoming uh, uh, becoming president of uh, Botswana as well. Let me correct you on that as well. Uh, but look at their history as well. The history is very different. Here you're talking of Obote. Obote comes in. You're talking of 1966. You're talking of Amin coming in. How did Amin come in? Through the Holy Spirit. Amin had to. You know, Amin came into power. How did Museveni yeah. come in? He had to baptize himself into power as well, using what? Fire. So it happened in Botswana. That's true because in Botswana, there's a, multi, there's a serious and straight multi-party dispensation system. But in Uganda, it doesn't work like that in Uganda. You know it very well. So it won't succeed in Uganda. That's why I can tell you it won't succeed. And even to look at all the dictatorships in the world, they rule for a very long time. When they're about to leave power, right? They always leave, those yeah. countries, they, they always leave a country in ruins. So for Uganda, it's very obvious. Why do I say this in the first place? The way the father has been running the country, right? I don't think he yeah. have the same brain to run the country. And he does that, of course. Given his tweets, you don't need to ask man. Given his tweets, a man who just wakes up early morning and he tweets whatever he wants to tweet. And he doesn't even edit what he tweets. Can such a person run a country like Uganda? A country of 45 million people? Uh, how about like what exactly happened in Congo? Isn't it, isn't it the same thing? Kabila did Kabila replace his dad when he when, when he became president of uh, the DRC? Uh, I think it also happened in in Togo uh, as well as uh, Malawi and Mauritius. In Mauritius, happened in Mauritius. Well, the the founding father, the founding mm -hmm. father of Mali, uh, the son of the founding father, ended up becoming president of Mauritius. But I told you, uh, there they follow the democratic path. Right. Fine. How as much as you're trying to use the democratic path to bring him to power, but there are lots of 
there are lots of uh, uh, laws being broken before they bring him to power. First of all, have Ugandans accepted him? No. Are Ugandans ready for his presidency? No. Right? Is this in a serving man? Is this in a uniform? Yes. Then why is he playing police at this particular time? Why are they hiding it so much? You see how it's being done? It's being done in the kangaroo way, in a Machiavelli way. It's being done in the Al Capone way. They are trying to smuggle him in very fast. I don't even know why. There's a lot of hiding in everything. There's too much hiding to this more the project. I don't even know why, by the way. Right. The man who just wakes up all of a sudden one morning, he's retired from the army. Then, before you know it, I'm now going to do it in 2031. In 20... Is it 2031? Yeah. Something like that. So yeah, 2031. You, yeah, 2031. How do you play with such sensitive information on the future of the future of a 45, 45 million people in Uganda? How do you play with such sensitive information? How, what kind well, of play are you going to make? Can, can, can we figure out why the army hmm. is uh, is silent about uh, the, the the events that are happening right now? I know uh, Lieutenant Gen. Uh, I know left. Uh, I know retired general, retired general Mugisha Muntu talked about uh, the events that are going on surrounding Doctor uh, surrounding the uh, CJ, uh, and uh, he says that. We are in a dilemma right now. Actually, the solution he gave us is for us to actually pray for this country. Uh, but as a, a retired general, do, what, what do you think uh, retired generals should do, including uh, Doctor, uh, do, uh, including uh, uh, Major Mugisha Muntu, who was the first uh, uh, commander of the, of the UPDF? Uh, what should uh, retired generals do to ensure that active members of the UPDF? Uh, have their voice speak out. Uh, uh, is it can it happen? Sorry, it's very unfortunate I'm going to speak about this, but I can tell you first of all, even the army itself is in captivity already. If you didn't know that, two, we are talking of a transition. Do you already know? Most Ugandans may not see this. Do you already know that the transition already taken place in Uganda now? Do you know that there's a, a, a transition already taken place in Uganda? Do you know that? It looks like, well, if a son can, can organize a national birthday, apparently there are also uh, events happening in other parts of the country. Uh, many people are asking why he wanted, he was so uh, interested in uh, celebrating his 48th birthday in Kampala instead of uh, celebrating it in either Tanzania or uh, Western Uganda. Uh, you see, uh, I, the old I wonder guy... what your thoughts are. I just have a lot to tell you about this. The old guards have been phased out. You guys are not seeing this already. The old guards, the, 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 main, the main actors of 1981 to 86, do you still see them very active? Are they still very active in the military? No, they have all been phased out. The ones who are in charge right now, people can deal with the, with, with, with the imposter. The ones who are in charge right now are the imposter's age mates. Our age group, in a way, are the ones running the system right now. So if you talk of what Mundo was saying and General Mundo was saying, you know, is a friend, of course, who work together. You know, and the messages were saying. Let me tell you this. Whatever the Muntu say, yes, they will just tell us what we need to know and act upon it. The Muntus played their part, right? Messages played their part. At the time when there was bad police in Uganda, like they claim, of course, they picked up arms and went and fought the sitting government of then, by, of, of then, of that time. And they came to power. Played the role they were supposed to play. When things started going wrong, they left. They can talk, yes, but they can't do much. People don't know this. I've worked with them very closely. Yes, they can talk, but they can't do much. The people can only do much. Are the youth, if they say 90% of the population in Uganda is the youth, it is the Salis of today, the Ogilis of today, living in the comfort zone of the so-called so -called Western world. And we go and face, we go and, uh, and, we go and deal with the nuisance in Kampala. The Moodles won't do much. And let me tell you this, next 10, 10, 5 years from now, I don't think they'll be playing a, a, a bigger part in our policy anymore. It's going to be those young guys coming up. The Bobbies are not going to play all these roles. The Sally's of today are not play, going to play these roles. Yes, the messages can talk, but they won't do much. Trust me, they won't do much. And this, some of the seniors who are so vocal, right? let me add on to this, some of the seniors who are so vocal that we know, where are they today? They either been silenced, if not silence, they have been eliminated mysteriously, and nothing comes up. They just die in mystery. People were opposed to that project a lot. Either have been silenced or disappeared. Just, they just die mysteriously, and you don't even know what happened. And it has been happening for some time. Uganda being Ugandans are quiet about it.
You know, what, what surprises me a lot is the fact that uh, senior uh, army personnel who have potential influence to deter this from happening, people who have been participating in ensuring that Uganda has a democratic pathway uh, to its governance, those who are able to speak are silent. Those who had the power to speak but did not uh, and ended up being eliminated uh, were also there. Uh, I remember Lieutenant General uh, Lokech, uh, very young man, very brilliant. He was eliminated, uh, apparently. They told us that it was the blood clot, but according to the people in Northern Uganda, they are saying that uh, their son was uh, eliminated. Uh, why aren't these deaths not being investigated? Uh, we know Chirumi that was eliminated. Uh, we know Kawesi uh, was eliminated. Oh, these are young, uh, were, were young army officers. Kazini, uh, Mayombo, all these were young army officers. Well, was the, were these uh, assassinations systematic to pave way for, 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 for what we are looking at right now? I don't even know this, Ali. Let's begin with the Mayombos now. Because if you talk if you, if you, if you talk of mysterious death in Uganda, let's begin with the Mayombos. Yeah, Mayombo is a very high-profile person in that government. You know it very well. If Mayombo's death, the report could not come up up to now. What else do you think will happen with the rest who died after him? Given the caliber of the person who was then, imagine up to now, people don't know what killed him. But it was just a mysterious, mysterious death. And they have not, I, the government hasn't come up with a public report about what killed him. So what do you think? So when do you think they'll ever come up with reports of a lot of Mr. Paul dying? Now, looking at what Sejusa said, let me just dare on Sejusa here. When he, he wrote that dossier, were it something to ESO to investigate the alleged uh, plan or plan to assassinate or to get rid of people who are uh, against this man's project, the, the imposter's project? That was in 2013, right? Yeah. People opposed it and they said it's not going to happen, it has never happened, it won't happen, but along the road is what happened. People are eliminated in a way. Whoever comes out, their rounders are gone. You don't even know what happened. Today is fine. Tomorrow, here yeah, it's a cardiac arrest. All of a sudden, it's a cardiac arrest. You wonder how. So a lot, lots of people have been going. Then we didn't believe him. Like I told you in Uganda, we don't believe much. We only come in, we only believe when something now hurts us that bad. We dismissed him. We dismissed uh, him. We thought uh, he was working for the establishment. Of course, there's always those questions uh, that happen based on uh, his record as a, uh, as a person himself. But he even he was the first person to reveal, uh, be, uh, beside uh, Dr. Besige, he was the first person to reveal that uh, the 2011, I think, was, was it the 2011 uh, elections were rigged? Uh, I mean, uh, that, that, that Besige won those elections. Uh, this was uh, uh, General Sejusa telling us this. But what, like, what confuses me the most is people like General Katumba Wamala, whose life has been attempted uh, to be taken away. Uh, the, the fact that he survived that assassination attempt, what is keeping him, even after the loss of his beloved daughter, what is keeping him silent? Uh, during these very sensitive uh, conversations. Why, why can't he come out and uh, say what he has to say? I, I, I remember uh, 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 General Kasirye Gwanga used to, to, to speak his mind, and of course he was also, uh, he also disappeared mysteriously, died mysteriously uh, during, the, 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 uh, during the, the pandemic. There are so many... Uh, army personnel that have passed on during that pandemic, some of whom uh, we never got to know about because either uh, they didn't want them covered or they just uh, didn't want the populations, the, 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 the Ugandans to know that these, these deaths were happening. What is the role of our keepers, specifically, uh, I'm putting this to General Katumba Wamala, uh, I understand very well that uh, he, must, he, he must be in a very uh, tight position to, to say something. But can't, can't he use proxies to say something? You see, Katumba, of course, uh, if you look at his profile, 
This man was the army commander before, right? If somebody who was there before him or after him died around that was there before he after him, right? He saw what happened to him and nothing happened. And this is somebody who was from the inner circle. And see how he died. So yeah. why do you think he will talk much that will change anything? You see, at the moment, at, at this particular time, they stay what whatever the first one they want is to keep the status quo. That's all they want. And they will not mind, they, will, they won't mind bumping off anyone off their way. Whoever comes that way will have to go. So Katuma Mala could have survived that time. Maybe his time is going to come another day if he doesn't act also now. His time will come another day. He may think that he's friends, but they're not his friends. He may think. Of course he knows. These people know a lot of things, but they keep quiet about it. If you're not, if you're not close to them. But I was just trying to delve on what Tinefusa wrote. Like I told yeah. we think Ugandans. Ugandans being Ugandans. He authored all these documents, and some of us, of course, didn't believe him. Said, now he's part of them. He's been with them all together. You know this. But to my surprise, whatever this man wrote in 2013 has now come to pass. And it's now happening. Right? Don't we see it? It has come to pass. It's now happening. A person in 1986 whose father was 12 years old, today even called the military his army. He hasn't, become, he hasn't even yet become the president. He now called the military his army. The army his army. You see what well, I'm saying? He, he did call yeah, he did. He, he does call. He does call the army his army, and uh, this is actually reflected in the recent uh, uh, football match uh, between uh, uh, the the legislators, the, the legislators, the, and the army. Uh, you wonder how the army could engage in a birthday party uh, game. Uh, so when he calls it his army, it's not really lying. It is his army. He has recruited it. Uh, he is the founder of the SFC, according to some circles. Uh, so when he tells Ugandans that that is my army, is he really lying? Do you think he's lying? Should I don't think you're lying. I don't think you're lying because recently the father even endorsed it already. And you wonder where the super minister went. The father endorsed it recently, a few yeah. days ago. The father said, you see, I've been very soft on corruption. Can you imagine this? The very dishonest man. He said, I've been very soft on corruption. This is what the father said. But this one who is coming, when you're celebrating the, the 48th birthday. This one who is coming, I don't think it will be easy. It will go easy with the corrupt official. Imagine, it means the father already giving him a leeway, endorsing the son to become the next president. The father said, okay, of course, it makes me, it evokes memories of John the Baptist. When he said, it, that's what the father was saying, it evokes memories of John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist say? For him, he baptized with water. Right? But yeah. the one who is coming after him, right? Jesus, Bible, fire, and the Holy Spirit. Imagine the father was endorsing the son that for him he's been <laughs> soft. He's been soft, right? right. But the one coming, what does it say? He's been already endorsed and sealed is our next president. There's no doubt about it. Of course, why, okay, where in this world would a serving general, a serving military general, hold a birthday, big birthday party, right? In Lugogo, you're a serving military soldier, you're in uniform. Then you hold your birthday for what? Ugandans just woke up, I think, in Colo in, in, in Colorado, in Lugogo. They just they didn't know that this man was being lodged into mainstream politics. Did they know that? That the man they was being lodged into mainstream politics. So which means the man is already there. The father already endorsed John the, 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 the coming of the Messiah, which is him now. The father called him the Messiah. He's going to baptize with the fire. We, we've been seeing what he's been doing. Is it true? Has he been baptizing Ugandans with the fire? Very obviously, in Karamojo, we saw that. He says that he does it. There was a lot of cleansing, not even butchering, cleansing of Karamojongs. So he could be right to call it his army. But he should, the son should know the use of our country. If he does not know the, the use of our country, he, they are going to wake up one day and they're going to be in Peru shop. Because our history is very clear. We've seen people before like him who have wielded powers more than even the father. What happened to them today? The Maliamongo died in poverty in Congo. I mean, died in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. He never stepped foot in Uganda again. Where the body die from? South Africa or Zambia. Zambia. All these guys wielded a lot of powers then, right? So it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And the person they're trying to front to become our president, look at his intellect. Look at the yeah, they, very many people have evoked his intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, many people have evoked his intellect. Of course, uh, he, the, the, his recent speech at, at, at his uh, very own birthday. Mm -hmm. Uh, justify the evoking of his intellect. But this this is a guy who has gone through uh, some of the most elite 
uh, military colleges uh, in the world, including uh, the, the Egypt Military College, uh, the, the, the Kalama Ahmad uh, Warfare Training School, the United States Army Command, uh, uh, the United States, uh, United States uh, National Defense, National Defense College uh, at uh, uh, Fort Leavenworth, Leavenworth uh, in, uh, in Kansas. Uh, and even though he did not complete his political science degree at the University of Nottingham, he, at least he studied for two years there. Well, why do you think this guy, despite having been the, 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 the um, despite having been the advisor, presidential advisor for the last couple of years before he, be, he became, uh, before he, he, he once again became the, 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 the lead of the, the, the army, uh, why hasn't he oriented himself into the diplomat he calls himself? Because diplomats are usually very good orators. You, you usually, when you look at Olalo Tunu, when you, when you start listening to Olalo Tunu, you're like, I want you to continue speaking. This guy couldn't even speak for two minutes without, uh, first of all, he looked like a drunkard, but even his speech wasn't eloquent. It, it, it wasn't coherent at uh, what, whatsoever. Uh, and this is the guy who's, who is supposedly going to be the next president of Uganda. Let me. What should we do about this? Let like, me... I, I've had many of his uh, colleagues, his former schoolmates, saying that he, he wasn't a very good performer uh, academically. But this guy has gone through very elite military colleges, including Sanderhurst and uh, uh, Fort Leavenworth in, in Kansas City. Uh, why, why, why is it uh, that he is not as uh, meticulous in terms of uh, delivering information as he should be? See, whatever happened during his celebration of the 48th birthday is laughable. Why does it laughable? If I were him, right, the first person I would begin by arresting was supposed to be Mwenda, right? There's no doubt about Mwenda being a smart guy. We know this. Before he was compromised, he was a very smart guy. And Uganda loved him, right? Yeah. Now, this man is handled by Mwenda. You see, Mwenda also looks at him like a de facto president if he didn't know. So he's handled by Mwenda if you didn't know this. So if Mwenda could not transfer his ordinary skills to him, and he's, he's always with Mwenda, he's been with Mwenda for like 10 years, and he failed to give a simple speech, See, I was reading his speech in Lugogo, in Kololo. You see, you know, you see. You could surround yourself with very brilliant people. But if you're dense, trust me, even if you stay with the brilliant people for 100 years, you will go nowhere. I once attended some Islamic conference. There's a Muslim scholar called Abraham Green. Right. He spoke a lot of things that, so intriguing thing that caught my eye, my attention then. Then I asked him, where do you get all this kind of knowledge? How do I get knowledge like you? This was around 10 years ago. Right. He told me, you want knowledge? I said, yes. I want the kind of knowledge you have. And he had no university degree, by the way, but a brilliant scholar. He knew everything. He told me, you want knowledge? He discussed a lot of things with me. Then he made it very simple. If you want knowledge, surround yourself with people of knowledge. So if had there been Mohozi, I would have arrested Mwenda first for making him a mediocre. I would have arrested Alan Kasuja. These are brilliant people. But I think they've also tried. They, in them, they keep quiet, but they have tried. This man is naturally a dense person. This is supposed to lead you, Uganda. <laughs> right? You can't right. stay with men and be silly. You can't stay with men and be dense. Men is a very bright man. So if I had they been more, I would have arrested Mwenda. First time. Because but, but, but if you say that if you say that they have tried that they have just given up on him, what what, what justification would, would he have to arrest Mwenda? Especially if, if they have tried to, to, to mentor him and they have tried to uh, to coach him. Uh, do, is, is it just the, the, the imposter syndrome that, that, that is still uh, surrounding him uh, and uh, eventually will become better? Or do you think is this, this guy is natural? We are doomed because this guy is natural. You see, uh, a privileged background does not amount to, 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 to a brain. You coming from a privileged background does not mean you're going to be smart upstairs, right? He's from a privileged background. In fact, his ways remind me of these kids who went to school in primary school and secondary. All they care about is playing station, playing those video games. He must have been playing a lot of video games in his school, high school days and, and private school days. Because you can't be with a father who has been the president of Uganda at the help of power for 40 years, all kind of 40 years. 
and you don't master anything, and you can't give a, a simple speech at Lugogo. Imagine I was speaking at Kololo. I'm like, no, look at our president. Look at our president. I would even borrow a word from, 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 from uh, this brilliant man here, the lawyer in Kampala. He's called the, the Lord Mayor. And that's Lugogo. Lugogo. Yeah. What did Lord Sadat was say? What did he say? Mutu Jozo nyone muitao. When I look at when I look at how the guy was giving a speech, eh? why was that person for? You see, you the youth, you see the youth. I know what the youth are. I know their problems. They should, we shall be putting a lot of money into sports. Since when? You're seeing it today, and and that's how you talk. In Kololo and Lugogo. And, and mind you, his his so-called mother, his alleged mother, is the the, the minister of education, which yeah, which is you. which is uh, which which is the 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 helm of sports. The mm. umbrella of the sports ministry. And she failed to do all this. Do you know in Kololo and Lugogo, he had the chance to redeem himself. He had the chance to pull it off with the whole other skills. He had the chance to pull it off in Lugogo. Right. Did he do that? No. He showed a lot of... He's so naive. This guy, he's so naive. I personally, I won't allow him to be my president. I personally, I won't allow him to be my president. Yeah. He will be any other person president, but not my president. I'll make sure I fight him to the end. But uh, that's not the reality. The, like most of us have, have dismissed Mr. Museven uh, as mm. not being our president, and uh, many people are calling Mr. Chiago like their president. Others are calling Mr. Bcj uh, their president. But the reality is that those people that we might uh, uh, be associating with, they don't have real power. They don't have tangible power. The person who has tangible power right now in Uganda is Mr. Museven, and that's why he's able. Uh, to pull off all this nonsense that is going on, uh, including uh, endorsing his son's birthday party. Uh, Sorry, as, as I told you in Uganda, everything happens. The truth is, we're in captivity. And the truth is, is that Muhozi's father wields power. We know this. We could call anyone president, right? But if you don't work hard to get, to get that power from that family, they will continue calling people's, people president for years. They will continue calling other people president for years. All we need right now is state power. And the problem is, you see, his father has been so smart. Why do I say this? You see, I'm trying to give credit where, where it's due. His father has been so smart. There was a man called, uh, he was a slave owner in the West Indies, English West Indies, in, in British West Indies. It was called uh, William Lynch. Yeah. The father has ruled Uganda like William Lynch. What did William Lynch say? The slave owners in the U.S., right, in the U.S. That, at that time, had failed to deal with violent slaves. You see? So they wondered how William Lynch had very few people and he had the big number of slaves in the West Indies and they were very loyal to him. Then they wondered how he was using it. Then they called him to come and address them. In, that's, it was in Virginia, Virginia, St. James River, something like that. So he talked to the slave owners then why their slaves were violent. This is what he told them. Listen, you don't use violence on these people. It's very simple. That's what the father has been using on Uganda. This is what he said. Beat the old against the young Right? Then peace the, the colored one. You see, in the US or oh, during the slave days, even up to now, the black ones don't deal much with the light skin. Just pit the, the old against the white and pit the, 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 the light skin one against the dark skin one. And that's it. If you use that, you'll, you'll manage them for, you'll manage slave for 300 years without any, any violence, using any violence on them. Create difference amongst them. That's what the father has been doing. He's been a master of divide and rule. What happens? Today, instead of Uganda is focusing on the main prize, which is the presidency, what are we doing? We are busy, abusing each other. You find Mao taking on Noob, Noob taking on Mao. So where should Mao waste all that kind of energy? In fact, during the slave days, we'd call a man like Mao, uh, we'd call a man like Mao, Uncle Tom, right? We'd call him right. Uncle Tom. All the energy he's using on Noob, why didn't he focus on the first family? Why didn't he point out? Mao is a brilliant man, he's a lawyer. Don't you think he sees what's happening in Uganda? Don't you think he sees what's happening and he knows it? <clears throat> Why is he so quiet about it? Why is he using all his energy on fighting a small group that has just come up? Right? So, if you look at his father, all this has done by, was done by his father. So, he's been a master, massive manipulation. So, I, I could call him for his father the William Lynch of our time. It has worked for him for so, so many years. Divide and rule. And he likes it. He's at the helm and we are fighting each other here. The only time Ugandans came together, right? I can tell you this. The only time Ugandans came together and it worked, they should have been focused, they should have been citing that example. It was only in Tanzania. There were so many different groups, but because there was one big problem at that particular time, that was Idi Amin. What happened? 
They they forgot about their difference. They had their difference already. They forgot their differences, marched together, and Amin was removed. Then the differences came in afterwards. That's what they should be doing with President Seven now with his son. Forget all our differences. Come together first. Get rid of him. When we get rid of him, then we shall now sort ourselves later. Because if Ugandans, we don't, if we don't Ugandans, do that, yeah. I'm worried. Right, the 50 year project plan will likely come to pass, but it won't pass in our time. Well, we keep saying that it won't pass in it our won't. time. Uh, oh, that was the, <clears throat> 2021 was the time he was leaving. But mm. Ugandans have gotten so many chances to get mm. rid of Museveni. In 2009, uh, the Kayunga riots almost uh, uh, got rid of uh, the Museveni establishment. Mm. Uh, we gave up and we let them uh, reorganize themselves uh, to consolidate uh, their power to where it is right now. In 2016, uh, a similar incident happened, this time in Kasese. The rest of the country did not say anything. Uh, some of, uh, the, a few people came out to, see, to, to speak something, but even up to now, the Omsinga of the Renzururu is in exile in, Uga uh, in Buganda, and no one mentions these events. Well, which, are, which other chances are we going to get uh, to unseat the dictatorship if we have missed all these uh, very pivotal moments uh, to get rid of the, the, the dictatorship? Mario? Is she on? Marion, unmute yourself. I'm not sure if you're speaking. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I am. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry, network issues. <laughs> uh, so, um, I would say that I wouldn't call them, how can I say, missed opportunities per se. I would call them uh let me say progressive tries you know trying tries and errors and people keeping on fighting actually they those those moments uh, in time and in history just a representation that you know people keep on fighting it's very hard to fight a regime that has all the monopoly over violence and you have nothing you have nothing to fight back um you have no guns you know you have no resources you have no money you practically your civilians with nothing you know if if a war was to start now none of uh, most of us would not know how to fight back most of us would 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 have against a gun maybe would have our knives and our pangas and and will be assassinated you know violated you know we have had a history of violence you know um we just came out of the lra war just recently so ugandans are cautious of the price of war and and what it takes um to to remove a, a government especially through violent means that is why most times they are hesitant you know to go all the way and when it comes violent they kind of push back because they know that they are weak and they are not able to mount the how can i say the resistance that is needed is that to say that there haven't been countries where civilians have come up and fight fought a government yes they have been uh, we have our counterparts in Egypt. We have our counterparts, uh, you know, the Arab Spring, for example. We have our counterparts in, 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 in Sudan itself, purely a civilian movement. But you also see how the military then hijacks those movements, those civilian movements, and produces more, uh, more of the same. You get it takes yeah. a lot to sustain an unarmed civilian movement. It, it, it takes a whole lot more to actually achieve the victory and the kind of democracy or the results that you want. Most of the time you will be hijacked, most of the time things happen and 
and basically it does not work out. It's only a few times, and those few times have happened whereby insiders have negotiated power, you know, the the military uh, interim government that goes in then decides to have an election, you know. Sometimes if you're unlucky, they put in a, a pseudo candidate and, you know, that person continues more or less the same as what they've had. So as African countries, we have really struggled. Um, we have struggled to take control of our destinies and our rule of law and our democracy. I, I wouldn't say that, okay, uh, perhaps uh, would we call it a failure? I don't think so, given the fact that these are systems of, of violence that we inherited from our colonial masters. And we haven't yet um, matured to that level of being able to break them down and then being able to stand on our own. It also comes with uh, a certain level of economic you know, empowerment. You, you do not expect Ugandans to sustain what it needs to take over government when most of them are living hand to mouth you know a hungry right. man always thinks about how do i survive yeah what is the next meal they are not thinking like us you know for us we we are we are not hungry people you know we have as as uh elites we have gone uh, um above a certain level above the poverty level so we can afford to think about politics and we can afford to think about the future uh of our country but for most uh citizens and and people ugandans that that that's that is not a reality they are thinking okay i've eaten each commando today how do right. i survive tomorrow right and and most times those are the tools that you know dictators will use to keep um you down keep you in chains you know control uh, the level of access you have to wealth so that they're the only people who have and they can manipulate it according to how they want and how they want you to respond um we were talking about also the divide and rule you know yeah. that comes in the tribal aspects and you are asking why is it that people sat down and watch the musinga being taken away and people killed in kasese and we always go back to the same thing we always talk on the show that perhaps people think it was a bakonjo thing not necessarily a ugandan thing right. you know, the concept of this country called uganda has not sunk into a lot of people's minds you know that's why whatever happens in buganda then becomes a buganda thing and all of us say that's between the kabaka and his people and yeah. you wouldn't find the Bakonjo talking about it or people in the north talking about it. So th mm. there are so many, uh, there are so many issues and so many reasons why what seem to be pivotal moments in history do not materialize. But I think for me it goes to the main, to the deep. If we just look at it on the surface, we won't be able to tackle it. But we need to take it to the deep root is the system that we inherited that even if it's aborted today i mean tomorrow you will need a leader who cares enough about this country to systematically break down the system of oppression that was left by the colonial masters and not break it down just so that he can control the system but break it down so that he can create a system that is sustainable enough that for the betterment of all ugandans and to get, I don't know how how countries like like China and Singapore got such leaders. <laughs> um, I don't know the mechanisms which people used to get such leaders, but that's what needs to happen in Uganda, but across the African continent, you know, because <clears throat> our forefathers um, fulfilled the first um, the first. Uh, task and that was getting us political liberation you know right they needed to be a generation that continues that struggle the definition what 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 does what actually this, okay they gave us pseudo political liberation but what does actually liber, political liberation mean can you have political liberation when you are still um you you still have 
ties to the IMFs and you still get donor money? Because even when we look at resistances, how do these resistances fail? You will see that the person who is providing the weapons to the NRM government are Western powers. They continue to give them resources. They continue to fund them. They continue to have military bases that are manned by these African leaders, by Museveni himself. If you look at the the, the number of, of uh, milit U.S. military bases that he mans and helps man on behalf of the U.S. government, where are his people trained? Where are the Mohoses trained? You know, who funds yeah. those scholarships? You get. So... It, it's not just a surface thing of saying Museveni must go. There are so many things that, uh, and this is across the African continent, there are so many things that you just need to break down as, we need to break down as particularly as activists and, and you know, and, and the leaders of today and those who want change. That it is not enough for just to look at that this particular dictator should, should Go. We should also look at the structure, the superstructure that holds him together, the superstructure that allows him to even think that he could bring his son to replace him. That superstructure needs to go along with him, you know. I particularly have followed, um, I think our, our brothers and sisters in West Africa have come to that realization. And perhaps because for them it's more direct, you know, the influence that this this colonial superstructure has on them is quite direct you know them being able uh for them directly half of the money resources they make just goes directly to the french government so theirs is is blunt yeah. you know they, they are their weakness money. their economic weakness is quite their exploitation is quite blunt but you have seen that they have said okay no there has to be an end to the neo-colonialism there has to be an end to how we allow you to interfere in our democracy and choose for us leaders or oh, we have to put cartel how you are able to keep these tyrants in power because the way that people like Museveni are kept in power they are also external forces you know yeah. uh, we, from our history you know the way that most African leaders can ascend is they first seek for the Western approval. We cannot run away from that. Hmm? And even if they go to the seat without Western approval, to sustain that seat, they need it. You know, those are things that we need to, to unpack. You know, why is it suddenly that even with the tyrancy on which Kagame has ruled the people of Rwanda, he seems to have a clean and and you know his the proper Ganda machinery around him is projected as this 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 benevolent you know uh, right <laughs> you know he's 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 the example of leadership you know right. to the west why is it like that and we know the atrocities yeah. that go on in his country the same thing for a long time Museveni was projected that way even when he was killing and massacring people to the rest of the world. Oh, he's a benevolent dictator. Oh, he's bad, but he's not so bad. There are people who are worse than him, but yeah. he's killing people. You know, right. he's, he, he is suppressing, uh, what's suppressing freedom? Like he's doing so many atrocities, but he's protected because the people who control your economy, the people who control your resources need him to be in that position. So right. even when we're talking about Museveni must go and then the Mohozi project, there are certain things we also need to look at, you know. Why does he feel like it's important for him to project Mohozi? It's important for Mohozi to project himself as someone who can bring peace within the East African region. Because those are one of the qualifiers that he needs to fulfill that so that he can replace his father in this region. I don't know if you get me. His I, father. I, I, I do definitely get, get you. Do, do, do you think that's the reason uh, he appeared on his birthday in a in a full combat to project that sense of security to the uh, stakeholders outside? Can uh, I come in a bit? Yeah, Mario? Yes, he he, he, needs, question, he needs to show that, that 
Marion, can I ask a question? Don't, don't, sorry for interrupting you. Yes, can I ask yes, you a question? Yes, please. Do you know our history very well? Yes. Does the current prevailing situation in Uganda cause for a peaceful change of power? When, when a serving yes, officer, yes, please go ahead. When a serving officer, hmm? when a serving officer is being launched into mainstream politics, when a serving officer is calling yes, a military... Was... Okay. Did you get it and maybe relate to her properly? I said... I asked you if you, you know our history very well. That didn't make any sense to you mm. for a serving officer, right? Mm. To call mm. a national army his army. That didn't make any sense to you for a serving officer, a man in the military, to celebrate his birthday and being launched into mainstream politics uh, and, abuse, mm. uh, and abuse the, the, the military conduct? Well, the thing mm. is, that, 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 what is no, happening it, in Uganda today is unprecedented mm. because it has never been there it's, before. Yeah, it's right? a question I'm still asking now. That the prevailing institution today of what I've mentioned about calls for a peaceful, does it call for a peaceful change of power in Uganda? Do you see it? Do you see events? Do you think it qualifies Uganda for a peaceful change? Like you're saying? Well, I will, then I will answer you, Maurice, that we have always had violent changes of government. Okay, one more. One more. You question. see, our history sorry, has taught us. I'm sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> I, I, I belong to a different. I'm, I belong to a different. Uh, what? I belong to a different, maybe, thought process. That knowing the history of my country, that the only way that we have changed governments, yes. Yeah, it's unprecedented, a military man joining politics and all that. But there have been military men taking over governments throughout our history. The only civilian uh, only civilian president we had were two, maybe Mutesa and Obote. And we know how power was handed over to them in particular. And we know the events that then led to others raising up. The changes of government that we have had, even Obote himself, he had to use the brunt of the military to take over power. Now we need to decide for ourselves, is this the trend that we are going to constantly take? That every time we have a problem, we solve it through the military. Always, always, it is the military that is at the heart and the center of our politics. That, that is where the problem, that is the root of the problem. That if you continue to let the military be your knight in shining armor, that in order for you as Ali, you, in order for me, you to allow, allow hey, let, let, let her finish let her finish, let her finish. Her no 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 let her finish let her finish proceed Marie. in order for you to gain power hmm? in order for you to gain power in order to sustain power you need the military then you should not be surprised that every leader that comes on will always use the military to suppress the citizens and make sure they keep you where you are even when you go for a military coup right now, and let us just suggest that we are going to use violence, take up arms, and do what Museveni did during his time and come on. How are you going to prevent that group of militia from again doing the same atrocities that Museveni's government did? What power do you have as a citizen who is a non-military man to control a, a group that is armed? That's the problem with, with, with military coups. It never ends. It's a, circle. it's a cycle of violence, you know? It continues like that day in, day out. You will never find an end to it. It will be today Museveni's school, then maybe tomorrow Morris's school, then tomorrow uh, um, Henry Sally's school, then tomorrow Marion's school. Violence upon violence and you never have there will be no semblance. There is no end to it. There is, no, there is no peace in between. Because how are you going to prevent the next militia, army man who takes over power, from making sure that his son ends up in the same position that he wants to, that he wants him to end up? After all, the military is there to protect him and to ensure that the country does what he wants. Right, Maurice, your thoughts. You, uh, I think you have written down a couple of points to, to respond. To me, so. yeah. Marion. No, without, without asking her questions, just respond to what yeah. she said. Well, let me respond to what she said, but and I don't your, think... Your, your Marion, see, we all want a peaceful change of power in Uganda, right? But with the prevailing situation, with the so-called imposter in charge and making arrogant statements, 
bragging of how he arrested so and so and tortured. Do you, do you see a peaceful change of power in Uganda? If one person is still doing the, still playing the same old politics of 1970s, 60s today. You talked of uh, China and Singapore. Did you read this book by Lee Kuan Yew from the third world to the first world? Do you know the mechanism used to, to transform Singapore from the first from the third world to the first world? Do you know how ruthless he was with the opponents, best friends? Do you read that book from the first world to, to, from the first world to the mm. founding part of Singapore, from the first world to third world, from the third world to first world? Did you read that book? Mm. Mm. You did, right? If you did, then you'd know that in Uganda we should use Lee Kuan uses mm. theory in mm. Uganda. For, for Uganda to work, to be a functioning state. As we're talking now, we're right now talking about a, a failing state. It's not working. Lee Kuan Yew fought corruption, right, Marion? By arresting his close friends. Before they came to power, he told them, look, this is government, this is public funds, this is public this. Do not dip your fingers into public coffers. The ones who went against it, the, the Kutesas of then, of Singapore then, I'm giving a very good example here. The Kutesas, the Jim O'Hedis of Singapore then, went to prison and were dismissed with disgrace in Singapore. He was an authoritarian leader. He was a ruthless leader. The moment these guys came out of prison, they were dismissed and all their loot confiscated. Did anyone ever dip their fingers into public offers in Singapore? No. That's why you see Singapore where it is today. In Uganda, Jim O'Hedis robs and in the next cabinet, he bounces back. In Uganda, this guy is called who? Mukula robs and the next cabinet is back. So do you see the will to even fight corruption in Uganda? Right now... Yeah, but but, but, uh, but, but uh, uh, Singapore is not uh, uh, really... We are talking about creating a democratic state, right? Singapore is not really a democratic state in the, in the sense no, she of... she talked uh, about it. She democracy. talked about it. That's why I came in and gave that example. How this man was ruthless with his friends. How this man treated his friends, right? Now, look at Uganda today. Madam, listen, we all want to see a peaceful change in, of power in Uganda. None of us is calling for violence in Uganda. I myself want to see a peaceful change in that country called motherland. But look at the prevailing situation in Uganda but, today. But, but even, even, even besides that, what, what I'm asking, Maurice, is that how does he ensure... How do you, Maurice, mm, you go no, ahead. let me ask you. Go ahead. How do you ensure... Mm. Maurice. Mm, go ahead. Go ahead. You can hear you. Go ahead. He hears. Marion, ask your question. Internet. Hello? Internet. Mm. Yeah, I'm you saying, can proceed with your question. How yeah. do you, how do you mm. ensure? Eh? Because mm. if we talk about dictators, if we talk about dictators, Uganda has had its full of dictators. How do you ensure that the next dictator is going to? How do you ensure that the next dictator is going to do what Singapore's dictator did, or what 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 China's dictator did? You have had so many dictators in your country, military after military regime. So, you see, we may not go even beyond here because the answer will still be the same. Do you see ourselves, okay, the people in power now, do you see them doing anything different from the previous government? Or they've been doing much worse than the previous government did? Of course, if somebody I... brags, give an example in this the, the, the just recently concluded election, somebody abducts, were there human rights, gross human rights abuse in Uganda in the concrete election? Yes. And the first son goes and brags about it. Do you, does, does, is it doing Uganda any good? And how do you change that? Through prayers? We go to Christ the King and pray? Well, that's what, uh, that? well that, that's what General Mumuntu told us. He asked us to pray for the country. Ah, okay. So we should go to church and pray. Rosa is right. <laughs> well, he, he was, I think he, does, he wasn't being, uh, I think he was just being. Um, uh, that that was a rhetorical some I, I think reference rhetorical reference. Still, it did really mean that Neil down and pray. Is she still online? Yeah, she's on, she's online. She came back. Okay, Marion. You know, look, address the entire issue okay, together. Let me because I think, on this. Yeah, I think me, we are here to learn from each other. Yeah. Okay, I personally believe yeah. in Moses' law. Ah, uh, sorry. I believe in Moses' law. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, yeah, we do hear you. My network is so bad. Okay. 
Yeah, I was still saying, how do you ensure that the next dictator does not act the same way? That you are not creating another Museven in the process. That's the tricky thing about military takeovers. You as a citizen, you as a citizen or a civilian cannot hold them responsible or accountable because either way you didn't bring them in power in the first place. So it becomes so tricky in that way. Have um, on the other hand, non-violent movements, whereby it, it, it's, it is a hard struggle um, most of the time. And I am not saying that in non-violent movements, there is no vi uh, violence. Of course, when the state comes up and it wants to suffocate the people, the people are tortured and, you know, uh, and suppressed and it takes longer. But the beauty about it is that when you succeed, the fearlessness that people have first of all to protect the victory of the government that they have succeeded in getting in the first place it builds a citizenship that are fearless and are able to take and fight for their own democracy that's the first thing but secondly you have a right to that government you don't have people saying that hey you didn't go to the bush with us so you you can't say anything shut up this is a freedom that i fought for for me and my family and not for the rest of ugandans which which in which what is your stake in this uganda that i have fought for you have no stake you have no belonging in this ugandan government that i have fought for but when a citizen is the one who has fought for their stake is the one who has owned their own struggle and said no this is my country I have a right to it. I have a right to this sort of democracy. I have shed blood. I have gone to war, not in that violent way of, let me say, let us go in a militia, but in the, how can I give the example of, of the Sudan way, that the people have rose up. The people continuously asking their governments for accountability is what I'm talking about. It is different from a person picking 27 men and 27 guns and going to fight and overthrow a government. That is not the kind of, how can I say that? That, that, that is not the kind of, 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 of movement that, that it's, it's what we have been having, you know? Yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to tell Morris is that it's what we have been having. There has to be a change that Every time someone goes to the bush and overthrows a government, we have more of the same. So there has to be a change in how we over, how we take over a government. There has to be a method in which we take over government where the citizen also feels part of this government, not continuing the colonial superstructure of, I will put for you someone there and in order for that person to be there, they have to have all this military might around there to keep this thing called Uganda together. Right. The missing yes, link in this thing we call Uganda, to me as a person, is that we haven't been able to fight for it as Ugandans. We haven't been given the chance to have a stake in it as Ugandans. Forget about these militias, but I'm talking about you, Morris, a civilian. Eh? with Henry as a civilian and saying that this is my country, you will never, the patriotism that those Sudanese people have right now and the belief and the solidarity in their country that they have right now will never be measured. You will never right. see it anywhere, at least in their neighbors that, that are around them. You can never bulldoze those people again because they have fought for their freedom. And that is why even when military wanted to put a puppet a puppet leadership they were able to stand up and say man we have fought so hard to get rid of dictators you are not going to put another dictator in his place maurice your thoughts that is my thinking as a person yeah. that is my chain of thought because for me looking at our history these things of we go to the bush we go to the bush we go to the bush Marion, now I'm just, they should throw this question to Uganda now. Now, yeah. how do we deal with the current situation now? 
because we have to use the Holy Spirit, we have to use the Bible, or we have to use the, the, the rosary to get rid of this man who calls the, sitting, who calls the military his army. He's not even a president. The lead of the gang, yeah. Yes. How do we now call, how do you deal with it now? We can't even talk of the next president without before dealing with this person. We can't talk of the next president or the next government coming before dealing with this person. This man is there for continuity. He's supposed to continue the father's legacy. So how do you even deal with how do you even talk of the next government before dealing with this man here? How do you do it? Malcolm X says the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Are we preparing for our future today? If you're still allowing a man to go hold a national a national uh birthday using taxpayers' money, right? Torturing Ugandans, calling it his army, miming Karamojongs. So how do you even prepare for the next government you're talking about? That will it, will it even exist? What you should know, or what Uganda should know, and Marians should know, at least in our lifetime, we are going to see a change. That's very obvious. Museveni is not immortal, right? We're in our maybe mid-evenings. Mid For him, he's in his evenings, right? So whether you want or not, he's going to die. That's very obvious. So we shall see that change. We shall see that change. But what kind of change do you want to see? A change where his son takes over? Are we going to be careful? No, the kind of change? The, the, I think the question right, right now Mariam has is that what, what do we do with, with, with Muhozi? When, when we don't, when we are powerless right now, we, yeah. we have no military might. Uh, and she, I, I think she, 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 her thoughts are that we cannot deal with gang, gangish uh, change of government. So uh, three people, five people, 10 people coming up together uh, and uh, bringing along their vision uh, to change the government in Uganda. I, I think her thoughts are yeah. that we should mobilize Ugandans to own this liberation so that it is a Ugandan liberation as opposed to 27 people uh, coming up and uh, supposedly alleging to, to, to liberate a country uh, when it did not need liberation at the time. Do, do, do you think Ugandans... Ugandans who did not go to the bush right away, who supported these guys when they were in the bush, including some of our parents, do you think they made a very big mistake to conspire with the rebels at the time, as opposed to uh, letting Obote uh, finish up his term and let the, 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 the multi-party elections happen? Uh, what are some of the, the errors or, or misdeeds that we must correct that were, were done in, in history that we must correct right now, uh, even as we talk about uh, the Muhozi project. Because it seems we, we, there's not much talk about Muhozi, the man himself. He's not mm. that established. There's not uh, so much of a history that he has made himself. But mm. what, what should we do as Ugandans to undo some of the errors or mistakes that, that that our parents did, that our grandparents did, uh, in the process of creating a Uganda that Ugandans should feel should should feel patriotic about. Because right now uh, it seems the pluralism uh, within which Uganda was formed is still embedded within people's thoughts. I am a Muganda. I am a Mkonjo. I am a Luo. Uh, and like, I think about the rot as, as my king. I, I think about the Kawaka as my king. I, I think about the um, singers as uh, my king. What happens in Buganda is none of my, bus my business. If I am a Msoga, what happens in, uh, in Kasese is, is none of my business if I'm, uh, uh, I'm a Nacholi. Uh, how do we bring Ugandans together to create the country that they deserve uh, democratically? before uh, uh, the emergency of the, 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 the imposter diplomat. Anyone of you can answer. Um, but also maybe to clarify something. I think, I think Maurice maybe is, um, thinks that we're trying to say that, you know, let's just, you know, uh, swallow our fate and all that. No, that's, I don't, just to make it clear, that's not what I'm saying. Are you talking about that? They have been that there has been countries that have succeeded in non-violent movements, and in some cases, it has been the only way that citizens are able to gain, first of all, build 
their movements and get more people to join because people first of all feel safe in that movement in particular because it's non-violent but also it's easier for them to get their message across secondly like i said before i do not believe unfortunately i do not believe in military rule as a person because i think it's one of the biggest challenges of africa and african countries i do not believe that creating another muhozi or another museveni is the solution to our problem as that's why i will be quite hesitant if anyone told me come and let us start a rebel group because that doesn't create cohesion it does not build the kind of critical mass that you need to actually it's not sustainable first of all because when you come back and you have been the only one fighting and maybe by some stroke of good luck you have succeeded museveni has gone maurice nothing is stopping you from being another museveni in your own right that is the fear that i have with that kind of strategy <laughs> of going to the bush and doing the same things that, that generation nothing is stopping you because after all you went you took yourself there you took yourself there with a few people that you had somehow by some stroke of good luck you succeeded and now someone say henry sal is coming to tell you what to do about your own government I know. but also it doesn't create the citizenship that is invested in its own liberation you do not have a citizenship that is invested in its own liberation i will take it to how um um moi we all know how moi fell right after a full dictatorship but it was it was not military rule that got him out am i mistaken or not you're right but the thing is kenya it had a military rule that different it wasn't, history. It wasn't different. but institutions in kenya worked they they still work we have no institutions that sure work that they work during most yes. time are we sure when he put most of his political prisoners behind bars <laughs> the man was a tyrant you know he uh, was, <laughs> he, he was he, okay of course maybe museveni was a bit worse than him or maybe museveni had more of the let me say the machinery but i just want to show you an example of where people were able to get out a dictator with citizens yeah, but, uh, Kenyans, with Kenyans are patriotic. it took longer but how do you build that patriotism is what i'm saying you become part of the struggle you right. build a citizen that is invested in its own struggle you do not you cannot have the democracy that you want when people are seeing the messages and the bobby wayne's going to the streets and they're saying that ah uh -uh, let messenger fight our battles for us you know uh -uh, bobby said that you're not to be quite the chagulani so for us we could quite say chagulani whatever like <laughs> you can't build that means there, there, there are different things that you have to solve before you even think of of launching the attack on Museveni right. amongst you yourselves you're not part of the struggle yet you get amongst ourselves we are not part of the struggle yet it is a struggle for certain people your opposition leaders are the ones who care if museveni goes or not you get me right you, you perhaps people in the military who want to replace me, the other people who care and that that is the, the problematic thing for me for allowing this certain class of people to be the ones who have their your democracy in their hands because they can decide since you're not interested they can decide how to sculpture it that before we even talk about going to the bush and who is going to follow you there yeah you mm, are see. in a country that has been under political violent turmoil people have lost their loved ones their lives since the inception of this country's independence you cannot go to the north right now and tell them to join a violent what to to join a militia right now after the years they have spent with what uh, their wounds from from the lra war are still fresh so you need to find a different way to organize is what i'm trying to say 
that you can't stop other organizing but you need to find a different way to organize and you need to find a way that brings people together that you have a situation like we saw that took away arab Mui. like the citizens are the ones who are saying go not a certain you know intellectual oh, what yeah. what elites money what that think that they but can be we, leaders I, I but they should have the rest of the citizens behind them right the rest that's of the, the only way you are going to follow the rule that you want to sustain because these people themselves who went and fought with you will be the ones to be like Gundi. We went with we 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 are also we were part of this struggle. Surely you cannot what pick us out. I know, but we have seen such things happen. For example, in Sudan, uh, the, the the movement that uh, took Mr. Bashir away from the presidency has already been hijacked by the the army, uh, and it's no longer a people's led government. How how are we going to manage those in, uh, inconsistencies? But you see, there's. <clears throat> Hello. Yeah, yeah, proceed, proceed, proceed. Yeah. You see. But you see, they are still okay. fighting. Right. You see, during the civil rights movement, even in, the in that situation, Henry Sally. For me, the thing that stands out as a beacon of hope for me is that even when they have seen that the, the, the movement is being hijacked, it is the people who are demanding for accountability. It is the people. All right. Morris, your thoughts? Mm. Like I told you, with the prevailing situation in Uganda today, the leaders won't change much, right? It is Uganda is going to liberate themselves. That's my oh. Che Guevara. Che Guevara said, we are just there to show them directions. And he said, Cubans are going to liberate themselves. And it came to pass. Uganda been, have been pushed down the edge by it, and they know it. They know it. That country is sitting on a time bomb. It's just a matter of time. And they are going to liberate themselves. You see, if you read about the civil rights movement in the, in, in the 60s, between uh, Martin Luther King, of course, I'm not his fan, and Malcolm X, who was a medallion of Malcolm X. They, had, they disagreed a lot on ideologies. They disagreed a lot. If you know, the, if, if, if you recall the proces procession of, uh, of uh, in Memphis, Montgomery, what did, right. what did Martin Luther King say? Do not be violent, do not do anything, don't throw stones at them. But there were snipers on top of the building, sniping people. When was like, we are walking to the promised land. That's what you should do it in Uganda. We should now resign to fate, and we are walking to the promised land. We should be non-violent. I'm not saying we should be violent, but somebody comes at night, picks up a colleague. Look at what happened to Noop. They pick up a colleague tomorrow. They pick up the other day. They pick up the other day, and Bob himself goes and confirms to the public so and so when didn't come back. This one is still in prison. This one you've never seen. So you're gonna just resign to fate and say, okay, let's go work, look for school fees, let them continue like that. Before you wake up after 30 years from now, that country will be in ruins. We shall be the poorest in the whole world. What do you do? Put a cap. Get rid of the privilege system right now. Deal with it now. Deal with it head on. Deal with it now. So how are we going to do it? You want us to be like Mahatma Gandhi in India? Will it work well, in Uganda? Will it work in Uganda? Basically, I tried to rally Uganda how many times? Did it work? How many times did you try to rally Uganda? Did you to work? I, I think the, 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 the reason I think the reason why uh, Dr. Chiza Besiji hasn't been successful, and that's the same reason why uh, uh, Geno Muntu is uh, is not yet successful. It's because the lack of trust from the the, the, the the vast majority of Ugandans. So why did you work with Bobby? No, but but also why did you work with Bobby as well? Uh, even even with that but also like i said you have not been able to bridge the divisions <laughs> by these tribal things and that's why i'm saying that even if you are to go your way morris eh, if you still have those divisions of uh, uh or your or your message or your, that one is a westerner they are in cahoots with with museveni and they are just spies uh, uh bobby or your muganda if you're going to be a kawaka let them fight their own wars 
Mau, ah, ah, those are northerners. Those northerners torture dance. Eh? They came and they killed a lot of our people. If you are not able, you will never build something that is sustainable. If you cannot as a leader, perhaps this is our biggest thing as leaders. If we cannot be able to bridge those divisions that are right from <laughs> colonial they come changing right. their head that the president of uganda must solve the buganda question eh? they must solve the northern question they must <laughs> surely surely <laughs> all these problems culture things that we need to solve that to an extent that we had to make sure that we, we <laughs> one 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 of our presidents in order to get rid of this just remove the institutions of cultures and kingdoms to give himself peace if you cannot if ugandans are not able even if it's in the opposition if they right. cannot build the bridges between themselves if besije and bobby wine cannot sit a muganda and then naturally cannot sit you will continue to see even if you bring even if you bring your movement the first thing that a one know when you is going to say ah, ah was baganda they are using you know they are using they are using what <laughs> they are using bobby they, they they went and striked those baganda went and striked when when they were ba when our son was suffering you get like i use I, this Mara, is you, leader, can't... you know mm. he's at Mara. the home of Mara. an arm of government but he's saying this statement because he knows the power of of divide he knows that that, that is all it takes for him to divide you yeah. he doesn't use it simply just for the sake of using it he knows its power so if you're not able to bridge and create a cause that everyone can can see themselves as a ugandan and not let me say an actually first and a Buganda first and a what you're going to have more of the same you will go to the bush you come back because uh, let me say sal is from buganda buganda will be the first one to eat from the national cake marion is a mukonjo her, 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 her government is in power she went there alone with her fellow mukonjo. what do you have to tell her <laughs> right right uh, maurice uh, as we wrap up this conversation how do you respond to that what are your thoughts on how we should proceed especially in the midst of the emergence of the imposter diploma. You see, Madon came in late. She came in late, but I talked about William Lynch here. But like she said, she also write about it. Um, um, Uganda, um, Uganda not dealing with it. Actually, um, Mulango not dealing with so on. So if we emphasize on unity, what is killing Uganda's unity? You had to come on the show. You had to log into the show when I was talking about this. That the only time Uganda was united was in the 70s, when they were hosting Amin. They all came together and bar and barred their differences. The only th those differences only emerged after me had gone. So if you could only come together, trust me, there will be history. But this division of, created by William Lynch, of course, that division is created by that man in power. He's a master of manipulation, pitting tribes against this, tri this one against that. If we do not come together and do that, we are going to be wasting our time. We shall be wasting our time. We need to start preparing for the future now. Otherwise, we shall waste our time. That imposter, of course, won't be my president. His father but, will be gone soon. We shall wrestle power from him. Marlon may ask how, but we shall wrestle power from him. It won't come on a silver platter. That one, I assure you. We are going to wrestle right, power. From we, him. we have been saying a that man, about a man who can't address a few, a few, Uga a few hungry Ugandans who had come to eat meat. How will even handle power? A few people had come who had gathered to come and eat meat, and you can't talk to them. And you think you can be my president? We are going to wrestle power from him. That will come but you say you, you said he has Mwenda, you said he has Alan Kasuja, you he said can't he has take in anything. His they brain can't take in they anything. To he should right. fire them. <laughs> his brain can't take in anything. He should fire Mwenda. He should arrest Kasuja. Because his brain can't take in anything. That's the first one to be our president. The father trying to entrust him with the power. We shall see. We I know, but this is this is the guy who, who happened to block a, a deal that opened those borders. So, uh, uh. <laughs> city, look, listen to this. Eh? You're in a sovereign state, another person in another sovereign state. 
look, you're in a sovereign, another sovereign state, the other person is praying of another sovereign state, but you're here praising a person in another sovereign state to be your uncle. So how should you deal with a person like you? Are you even fit to be a you? Are you even fit to be a president? Are you even a Ugandan calling another person in a, in a sovereign state your uncle? Yet you know very well the history they have in our country and what we went through because of that whole state. So how do you prevent such a person with power? You know the history you have, their history in Uganda. You know it very well. How many Ugandans are mine by the so-called way he's calling uncle? So that's the person we want to entrust with our power today. Anyway, it will happen in his father's dream, but not in our dream. It won't happen in our dream. It won't happen in our time. We shall fight it, though. And it's going to fail. He is bound to fail. He's going to fail. Ugandans should know that. You heard it uh, from the state of the nation. Uh, Marion, as we wrap up this conversation, I know the internet has been very... Uh, unfair to you but uh, you always bring very uh, uh very interesting and informative perspectives on these conversations so i wonder what your thoughts are as we wrap up and how we should proceed uh first of all on was this controversial things it, it it beats my understanding how a man with so much resources and so many political advisors is uh <laughs> says that spews the kind of rubbish he does on on twitter but also i i i think that that you see and this is just my thinking i i think that the 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 whole people power um movement there's a way that it it changed our politics uh, as we know it and 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 we can't take anything away from from that particular movement but i also feel like it pushed the muhozi project nearer you see because this was a clash it looked like a clash between um a young and older generation and of which museveni was so disadvantaged in that playground you know he is an old kada He's a military man, like he's everything that our generation is not. And so we, we can't relate to him easily, you know. But but then he, he meets this young challenger for his throne. Eh? And he's quite um, perplexed on how to go about this. Boy uses social media. This boy is on Twitter. He's used to his radio and TV things. It was a whole different ball game for him. So I, I think in so many ways, that, and, and, and then the fact that, you know, I, I, I'm not to take anything from Bobby or anything, the fact that this boy was not of, you know, his, you know, his caliber of academic, you know, his requirements, you know, at least uh, forget about this election where he put a lot of fishermen and women. He was a person who used to surround himself with the most brilliant minds and always at all times would like to show the world project that that you know that picture of intelligence and you know i you know i have studied this and that and you you know you caught simani napoleon and all those things but then you your challenger is is a is a guy who has a diploma in music you get you get me so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do you how do you um go <laughs> go about this this opponent that that fate has given you what does that justify talk like him <laughs> I, I wonder, want wonder to that like just... him in Muhozi. <laughs> I know I know right does that justify bringing Muhozi ahead of, uh, of his, uh, his, uh, his, yes, so you have to bring Rosie closer, but you also have to brand him um, in a way that is ridiculous. You're almost mocking your opponent, you get. So you bring a younger version, you know, you bring a younger version that is on Twitter ranting and, you know, always on Twitter and, and spewing shit. And then you also since you open it is from a, a kind of ghetto gangster kind of thing then you put their parties and you try to blend in you get eh? so you create that you you try to you try to fit in 
<laughs> to your opponents um to your opponents what to your opponents Image. um how can i say um should i call it lifestyle you know because your opponent's Image, lifestyle yeah. is, is he comes from a background Character. of music and all that you get so you right. uh, yeah. so you try to to mimic him although i feel like yes to mimic his image but although in mimicking his image you are doing it in such a mocking way you get right yes so i i feel like that's why the mohoses project was brought near you know to try to create a challenge but also to bastardize the whole people power struggle and what it 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 what it stands for you get to kind of ridicule you know but on 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 the change on, that we want to see on the way forward yeah how we um, proceed i think that um we, we don't have all the answers right now all we can do is you know sit down and you know continue to strategize continue to fight on continue to improvise new ways to, to forward to to push the struggle further but to me my biggest yes we, we can't give up you know i'm not saying we should give up but also we should be able to sit down and say okay this didn't work so how can we reinvent ourselves how can we re, you know improvise how can we make it you know better you know how can we further ourselves okay how can we you know bring something bigger and better that can actually work but for me i think our biggest undoing is the issue of division even when we start with our leaders who are supposed to lead the way in the opposition as long as we cannot cross and bridge that political divide that tribal divide that perhaps religious divides that keep us apart we will never be able to this guy cannot be out with just a one man army the challenges that we have cannot we, we can't you can't do it individually as a mutually or as a muganda or as a mukonjo alone you need this thing called uganda either way you cannot run away from it so until you bring this thing called uganda in one accord and these people called ugandans to actually fight for this thing even if it's a colonial construct but it's what they have now it is hard to change it now we're already in it you need to find ways to make them accept it that is one after accepting it and say this is our thing <laughs> no matter what we do we are stuck with this thing and we can't move on further yeah sorry you're off you're off oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness you're uh, off, right? Uh, well, I was muted. I was muted, but I eventually unmuted myself. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, it's. Uh, well, you wanna say something else before I close? Yeah, I could just say if Northerners cannot also, if they can't. If these Northerners cannot uh, uh, up their game and they think you see right now, Northerners think they are part of the government because of the position. We think. We chicken. think. We think. They think they are part of the government now because of the position. We think we are part of the government. That's what I should say. I'm not part of the government, though. But they think, that's what I'm saying, they think. We think we are part of the government because of the so-called hawks. They have been hoodwinked to believe that they're in government because of such positions. Yet, in actual sense, they are being played during broad daylight, and they can't see it. They can't right. see it. I can't also blame them for that, anyway. If you see that, like the, the mouse Uncle Tom's, other people should fight properly come to 2026. But 2026 won't be easy. Ejakuwaya bode like Bobby said. Atabi so wala akola chini. Yes. Ejakuwaya bode. Atabi so wala akola chini. I agree with you. Twenty twenty six. You know what bothers me is the fact that we are looking for twenty twenty six. That's what Bobby said. Umutiki wala bode. Atabi so wala akola chini. We shall see in twenty twenty six. It will be hot. We shall all come in. Hmm. That's the that's the like that is even more problematic. If we are looking forward to 2026, when we know we have no institutions that work, when we know that the, the vote will be the, 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 the election will, will be stolen again, whether it is with Mohozi yeah. or, or, or his father or, or his uncle, some uh, one of his uncles who lives in Uganda, like, 
we know there's no there's no chance that a free and fair election will happen in Uganda. It's not. It will be a different ball game. So, 2026 so will be a different ball game. We shall be sealing his fate by then. It will be a different ball game. We don't know that. When we are just having these conversations, and I don't, I, I am not saying that conversations are bad. I think this is where ideas start. This is an incubation of ideas uh, where we, we should be interrogating our own ideas and see how realistic they are in, in, in bringing about uh, proper change uh, in Uganda or tangible change in Uganda. But as long as people like uh, Honorable Matembe's uh, thoughts about what is going on and not uh, propelled by other voices, as long as uh, uh, it's uh, only general, uh, retired General Tumukunde, retired uh, Kano Kizabe, CJ, uh, a few people speaking about what we need, the actual change that we need in Uganda. And as long as we have not taken the initiative to create ownership by Ugandans, all Ugandans, of their project Uganda. Because we know that we come from different entities. But we are in this project Uganda that we cannot get rid of right now. A project that has already been taken to the East African Federation, even though we haven't settled issues here at home. A project where now people in central Uganda mostly are struggling to figure out who, should, who they should report to regarding their land. Should they report to the Buganda Land Board or the, 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 the government of Uganda? Who should decide for them? Like, as long as we still have all these challenges and we are not willing to have honest conversations about them, we are still going to have a gang led by Mr. Museven and his son and now the family uh, taking advantage of all of us as Ugandans Plundering our wealth. Uh, you remember very well Mr. Seven calling uh, Bunyoro oil is oil. People of Bunyoro should be yeah. talking about oil, right? So uh, the son learned those words from the father, my army. Like, yeah, my <laughs> army, my, my oil. Army. Uh, right? And, uh, and Mundo says what we should pray. Mundo says we should pray. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, Jero Mundo to talk. <laughs> we should pray. <laughs> so we should pray. <laughs> He told us to pray, to pray for the country. Uh, but like, what, what could he say? He is the army. He, he is a former officer. He understands very well how the army works. Uh, if that's what he has to tell us right now, of course, he has done a lot of uh, work trying to educate people, trying to uh, enlighten Ugandans. But of course, Ugandans have embraced him perhaps because of the uh, the tribal sentiments that are uh, surrounded that 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 are surrounding our politics in Uganda. Today. But also, they don't feel he's radical enough. <laughs> I know he's not radical enough, but 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 do we need a radical? Museveni was a radical. Look where he has taken us, right? Um, uh, and uh, Mugisha Moto has had a record when he was army commander. When it was time for him to 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 to, to leave and retire, he retired. He left, right? Uh, he worked for, for the FDC. When it was time for him to leave the FDC, he left. So he has a uh, he has a record of uh, of leaving office, uh, even but, when. But you see, if if you are to move a people, you know, if you are to move a people to action, usually they need to follow a man who they feel has passion and vigor, and you know can bring the revolution down at any time you know you, you need to have a persuasive tongue you need to be an orator and i feel maybe the people feel like he is not he doesn't inspire he's not <laughs> he's not inspiring and the person who is and the son who is advocating for the top office can't even address p3 kids you can imagine how you were talking <laughs> in Colombia. you're like allah uganda uganda anything is possible in uganda you see <laughs> the youth, you see, I've been there, I know their problems through sports, through the, I'm like, what? So this is our next president. Sally's <laughs> next president, right? You can imagine <laughs> mediocrity. I can't settle for mediocrity anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's this, unfortunate. Is a this is a challenge that we all have. It's very unfortunate that many people do not want to speak about it, to talk about it. Uh Honorable Seneco dismissed him, uh, I think, two, two, two or three years ago. Uh, 
I don't know what his thoughts are right now, but when you look at that interview that he had with uh, Kagwanjala, so, so uh, Simon Peter Kagwanjala, uh, you you hear that, uh, that him dismissing the, the project uh, and not taking him seriously, not knowing uh, that now, given the parliament we have, the legislature we have right now, uh, we, we haven't tested it. We don't know what kind of uh, policies they are going to pass. Uh, of course, we know that uh, they, 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 they are the ones who who are quiet amidst the, 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 the coffee deal that is happening. Uh, they should be questioning a lot. I don't think they are, they are doing that. We are challenged to think about how we are going to change our country. Uh, some people are, last two, the last two weeks were talking about having a negotiation with the, the people in power, the people who actually have the real power. I wonder what you guys think about having those talks, the roundtable talks, and uh, who is going to set the agenda and how that agenda should look like. Time is running away, but uh, there's a lot I, to discuss. I don't think you can negotiate. Go ahead, man. Which negotiations are you, are you saying? Well, they, 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 they are think, they're thinking about negotiating power, thinking about uh, negotiating a transition. You, you can't negotiate power when you have no power. <laughs> you cannot negotiate power from... <laughs> from you, you need to bring something to the table. I cannot when you have no leverage. You, yeah, you have, have leverage. no you're, you you're leverage. Have... You're negotiating power, yet the transition is taking place in the military. Like they broke the impact now. It's already owned this by somebody that, who is in my army. How are you going to negotiate exactly. with that? Like that? These things that Mao keeps on talking about, let's sit on the round table, but you have, you don't even have a following. You see, <laughs> someone who can negotiate power is someone who is is a one, uh, what's this this guy who uh, Uhuru is, is supporting now? Bruto. All right. No, no, no. Oraila, you can't negotiate power when you are one Oraila because you have a whole, you know, region that is at your back you. and call. That when you want to, you can call them and form like a small army and disorganize the whole of Kenya. That is when you can call yourself an opposition leader that can actually what negotiate. negotiate. Power. You get, and and you know I have conversations with people, and and we keep on saying that perhaps it's time in our organizing to rethink, <laughs> and the, the 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 Kenyan way is is you know the Kenyans have accepted their tribalism, <laughs> you get, and they have weaponized it in a sense to use it to in a way protect themselves and keep their governments in check. Yes, some people will say that, you know, it's a family dynasty, just a couple of families changing hands. But at least they're exchanging hands. It's not in one family, you know. It can go right. to this region, it can go to the other region. And we can see that there is every year, at least they expect, a, you know, they have hope of changing their leadership. You know, one family checks the other. So maybe even in Uganda, we should say, okay, Mau, help us and consolidate the, the North. The North. So when yeah. you come to the negotiation table, you have come as what? <laughs> Mao <laughs> won't do that. Marion yeah? Mao yeah? won't do that. Mao is busy it? with Mao is busy hitting noob. Yeah? He's declared that you had on noob. He won't do that. <laughs> Mao is busy when, with noob. <laughs> when we come to Bobby, we say, help us consolidate the South. Yeah? So that when we come to the negotiation table, we know that you have an army in the what? In the south. In the south. Yeah. 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 The west message, help us co what consolidate the west. So that when you come here, now as opposition, then we can come with our own what parts of the country, create a block and say, okay, you man, yeah? <laughs> we have all these regions. Now we are coming for you as a person. And that's what needs to happen. But it it would become hard. And, and, and perhaps this is why it is hard for opposition leaders, depending on who is in the spotlight at that time, to, ca to converse, first of all, the whole country, but also to gain support. Because by the time you, you infiltrate people, by the time you learn their language, by the time you, <laughs> you sell your right. agenda to them, 
the election is done. And usually you have how many, you don't even have months to campaign. You have like weeks. Hmm? You have a in, month. In months, you should have gone around the country and what? And finished your business. So you're a new kid on the block like Bobby was in 2021. Perhaps you have you don't even know some of the names of these districts. You're hearing their names for the first time. You're seeing people for the first time. How how do you expect to get your message across with a country that has over 40, 50 languages? You 70 get languages. seventy. Now you see seventy languages. How are you going to get your message across? Even if I say you're going to translate in seventy languages. So it becomes it's complicated. Hard. It is. It becomes hard. That's why the, the Kenyan way works, you know. You get your Raila, you know, you get your Uhuru, you get your Rutu. Then you start battling. Now that's when you call it real negotiation. You know, this person yeah. has root in this 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 region. So we must, in other words, we must uh, 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 embrace our identities and use weaponize them. To, to get probably. to the negotiating table. Probably. Probably <laughs> that is that is probably I mean it has worked for the Kenyans. <laughs> probably that yes. If some are not fight, probably <laughs> yes. If some are not engaged in fighting small small wars. Huh? The ones <laughs> who like are, too small? are not engaged in fighting small small wars, oh. it will work. But if he declares a whole jihad on noob, it won't work. <laughs> he it, leaves it the big can't. man. You can. cannot fight in your own house and expect that house to And that's very true. Stand. You'll be the deep in your own house instead of the, going for FDC the main You cannot be fighting noob. DP fights noob. Mm -hmm. The people, you're fighting actually the people because the people are the ones that give noob its legitimacy. That's true. So if the people have chosen it, you just say, oh, well, I don't like the people's choice, but we... Munange, that is what they have chosen. You should interrogate why they have chosen it that way. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, folks, uh, it's been a pleasure having this conversation. And uh, I think we need to continue speaking and uh, pushing for real change. I don't know how you're going to do that, but it seems that's all we have to do besides praying. Uh, let's let's <laughs> get a little bit after that conversation. This is the state of the nation. Rifa Mwanga. We are deliberate. We are reasonable. We are uncensored. The state of the nation with Henry Salvador.